Alright guys, I'm back with my review of this week's WWE Friday Night Smackdown for June 28th, 2013. And I really felt like this was an average show this week. Um, nothing really special. It felt like it was... They were trying to make it really gimmicky with the Dublin Street Fight, Fiesta Del Rio, and... I don't know. It just it didn't really do anything for me personally. I did like the six-man tag match, and I thought Dolph Ziggler did a good job with the whole Fiesta thing. But yeah, I thought Fiesta Del Rio kind of sucked, just like the first Fiesta Del Rio. And it was just a really typical show, and you had matches on here like Ryback versus Justin Gabriel. Um, and I think there was another stinker on this show. But anyways, I'm just going to get right into this one. It starts off with the Sheamus versus Sandow Dublin Street Fight. And the match was okay. I didn't really mind it. Um, Sandow comes out and says that they will rename this match the Sandow Street Fight, which I guess would consist of library books and globes or something. Um, however, in the Dublin Street Fight, they have beer taps, kegs, green kendo sticks, bar stools, and a sack of potatoes. So I guess the Irish only drink and eat potatoes is what they're trying to tell us. Um, so I thought it was kind of ridiculous, but that was the gimmick here. Um, Sheamus sets up a couple of chairs. Bro kicks Sandow over the chairs, gets the win. It was okay, but nothing really special about this. Kane tells Daniel Bryan that his match with the Wharton was great. It was an upset, and Bryan says, what do you mean an upset? Um, the only thing upsetting was that I didn't beat him the first time. Kane gets upset and says that he has a match with the Wharton, and Bryan's stressing him out. So Daniel Bryan says he's going to be out there on commentary for Kane's match just in case he needs him, and then he hugs him. Miz TV with Paul Heyman. Miz brings up Heyman bullying Renee Young, says, uh, you think you can bully me? Heyman says, no, I can't. You're a wrestler, and I'm just an advocate, but I do have a guy who can bully you. He brings out Curtis Axel. Miz says that he will beat Curtis Axel for the Intercontinental title. He makes fun of them both. Challenges Axel to a match. Heyman holds him back. Uh, Miz goes to do his I'm awesome thing and Axel actually attacks him here which was pretty awesome. Hits him with a swinging neck breaker type move. So I guess he has four finishers. You got this move, the Magilla Cutter, the DDT, and the Perfect Plex. So which one is he going to use? I mean it's like they keep going back and forth with this guy. But I thought this segment lasted way too long. AJ versus Natalia. Caitlyn comes out dressed as AJ. And she looked really familiar to me, but I cannot put my finger on who it was she reminded me of. And I kept trying to think of it. I'm not sure if it was someone from the Jersey Shore. Maybe a little Wow or something. I don't know, but she looked really familiar dressed as AJ. But anyway, she says that Caitlyn has, or AJ's been with the timekeeper. She's been with the doctor. She's been with Lillian Garcia. AJ gets distracted. And Natalia rolls her up for the win. Afterwards, Caitlyn spears her. Vince asks Teddy about the SmackDown Money in the Bank match. And Teddy says they could have done what Vicky did and put all the top superstars in the match. Implying, I guess, that he's stuck with the jobbers. I don't know. Um, but he went with Wade Barrett, Ambrose, Cody Rhodes, Sandow, Swagger, Fandango, and Antonio Cesaro. Now, the only guys I think have a chance of winning this Money in the Bank, unless things change over the next couple weeks, are Dean Ambrose or Wade Barrett. And Wade Barrett, I know they had plans to have him win Money in the Bank last year, uh, but he got injured and everything. So I could see them putting the Money in the Bank on Wade Barrett, but... They also have Dean Ambrose out there who they've really been behind. And as far as everybody else is concerned, I don't think they have a chance in hell. Maybe Antonio Cesaro, who I'm a big fan of, would love to see him win. I just don't see it happening. But maybe because they put him with Zeb Coulter, if he starts squashing guys the next couple of weeks on SmackDown and Raw, maybe he has a chance. Um, but yeah, Wade Barrett wasn't even on this show, so I, even that's a toss-up. But I have to say Ambrose or Barrett. And it's all heels, so it is going to be a different type of match. Um, Kane versus Randy Orton with Daniel Bryan on commentary. Kane ends up on the outside, and the referee starts counting. And he only gets to four, and Daniel Bryan runs over and throws Kane back in the ring, which was hilarious. 
Uh, Orton hits him with an RKO. So Orton wins the match, and then Daniel Bryan is smiling. He's acting really happy about this, and Kane's like, what the hell, man? So this was really hillish behavior here, and I thought they wanted to keep Daniel Bryan a face going into SummerSlam, and I really hope that's what they do. Turning Daniel Bryan heel is a bad idea, and even though I love him as a heel, right now he needs to keep this momentum of being the underdog going into SummerSlam. He needs to stay a babyface. It's very important right now. So Ryback versus Justin Gabriel. Ryback hits Shell Shock for the win. Jericho comes out and makes fun of Ryback, says that he just makes excuses and he should be called Cryback. He gets in the ring and tries to put Ryback in the walls of Jericho, but Ryback escapes. This is some crazy ass booking right here. Ryback is this huge monster guy. So, they're going to have Jericho come out and make fun of him after the guy just was selling for Justin Gabriel and he's still selling his leg being injured facing Justin Gabriel. So he's already weak. Jericho comes out and makes fun of him and then Jericho's about to put him in a submission hold and Ryback has to run away. Uh, this is just terrible booking for a huge monster heel. If it was somebody like Cody Rhodes, a smaller guy, okay, I can believe it. But Ryback running from Chris Jericho, it's just too unbelievable. The Shield versus the Usos and Christian. This was a good match here. Very fast-paced. I really like this. Uh, didn't last too long. Ambrose gets ready for a dive to the outside, but Christian runs in and spears him for the win. Then we get the Fiesta Del Rio. Del Rio starts talking in Spanish to get some heat. He breaks a pinata with Dolph's face on it. Um... Dolph comes out, he fights with Del Rio, hits a zigzag, he throws Ricardo off the top through a table, he grabs a guitar and goes after Del Rio, but Del Rio escapes, so Ricardo takes the guitar shot, and then Del Dolph Ziggler sings with the mariachi band to end the show. Um, so that's how it ended, and I thought they did a good job here as far as Dolph Ziggler is concerned, because he did look pretty strong um, in there against Del Rio, and of course Del Rio is playing the <clears throat> cowardly heel. Um, so that was good. The whole Fiesta thing was just ridiculous and uh, lasted a little too long, I thought. But, uh, yeah, as far as SmackDown goes this week, very average show. Nothing really to get excited about. Um, they announced the participants in the SmackDown Money in the Bank match, so at least we got that. And it's all heels and it's all guys who just usually lose. Um, so I have no idea what they're going to do with that, but... Pretty much all those guys are at least okay to great wrestlers. Um, the okay person would be Swagger, uh, but the great would be Cesaro, Dean Ambrose. Um, Damian Sandow, I think, is really talented. So it could still be a really great ladder match, but I don't think it's going to be anywhere near the ladder match we're going to get for the WWE title. Um, but anyways, that was my review of SmackDown this week. Hope you guys liked the video. Leave your thoughts on this week's show in the comments, and thanks for watching.